I've had this SRX in my fleet for the past couple of years, but it really doesn't see a lot of attention, especially since the SCSI joined the group. Now, the other reason it doesn't see a lot of attention is that I've already done a bunch of work to it a few seasons ago with some maintenance items, and since then, it really hasn't broken. It's one of the best running triples I have. <laughs> Four mile an hour. On the ice, the SRX barely managed to pull speeds in the mid 90 mile an hour range, which was pretty disappointing. I thought this thing would at least see 100 miles an hour. Then the SCSI, the sled that never fails to fail, sucked up the rest of the limelight for the season as the SRX just kept doing its thing. But now Brody and I think it's time to put a little effort into the old sled and we're going to change the piston rings today. Hey, look, you got the right tool for taking the springs off. That's a you job. Don't lose any. Mind you, just the piston rings this time. In an earlier show this season, the spoiled sibling in this group, the SCSI, got the full treatment with a new set of Wisco slugs. The SRX is only getting the rings. Now I am taking a bit of a chance that the pistons, that if they're original, have over 18,000 kilometers on them, are still good and haven't scored the cylinders too much. Now I won't know that until I'm inside. Instead, I wanted to do just the rings on this machine to show that you can freshen up an engine on a bit more of a budget. As always, I'm starting this job off with a quick compression test on all three cylinders to get a picture of where the engine is at. Now there's some debate online as to what we should be seeing for a compression test on the old SRX. Really, I've seen numbers anywhere between 130 and 150 PSI is acceptable, but things like altitude can have an effect on that, or if you put a little bit of oil down the cylinders to cheat it a bit. Really though, what I am looking for is consistency across the cylinders. In the case here, we've got 130 on the mag side and 135 on the two other cylinders, so a 5 PSI spread. That's not too bad. Actually, better than I thought it was going to be. Getting into a job like this isn't always a predictable procedure, but there's some things you'll need to do before you dig in, like order your parts. The most obvious thing to get is a replacement set of rings that are the correct bore size. I'm assuming there's stock on this SRX, but on any older sled like this one, there's always the chance that a previous owner did some cylinder repair work and went with an overbore that would require a larger replacement ring set. Then you'll also need new gaskets to replace the ones you'll be ruining by taking the engine apart. Now I chose to go with a full set I sourced at Kimpex. This kit even comes with new power valve gaskets, which will allow Brody to clean those things up while we're at it. So this Yamaha tip is also a teachable moment and the teachable moment is all about naming your snowmobiles cylinders and they're not Tom, Dick and Harry. So basically whenever somebody's referring to the engine cylinder of a snowmobile, it's either the PTO, middle or mag side cylinders. Now do you know what PTO stands for? No, I do not. So PTO is power takeoff. That's always the side that your power is coming from. So it's the clutch side. Then you've got your middle cylinder and then your mag side cylinder, which is the side your ignition's on. So the magneto's in there. Now, if you have a twin, which cylinder is not there? The middle. Middle, that's pretty obvious. So you just have PTO and mag side. So now you know. Yes, I know now. You know now. Continuing the teardown, I'm taking my time checking for any other problems along the way and also paying attention to any different fasteners as they're removed. Sometimes there'll be different links for different locations on either the heads or the bolts holding the jugs to the block. If you find bolts of different lengths, mark them or make a mental note to make sure they go back in the right place for reassembly. So at this point, we got some good news and some bad news. The good news is these are standard bore 69 millimeter pistons, which means the standard bore replacement rings that I've got are gonna work here. The bad news is one of the exhaust valve cables was broken, which definitely would have killed some of the top end on the SRX, but it also means I gotta find one before it's gonna be running again. Next part in this rebuild though, is to clean everything up, replace the rings on these old pistons, and then start reassembly. We were planning to clean up the power valves on the 700 anyways, but this broken cable will be an issue. And it's been broken for some time by the looks of the guillotine that I had to pull out of the cylinder with a pair of pliers and was a real bear to clean up. Now, unexpected issues like this are always possible and we'll push back the finish of this job while we're waiting for a new cable to arrive. 
At least it's a part on the outside of the engine so we can continue with the cleanup of the parts and reassembly. Another tip for whenever you've got an engine open like this is to prevent anything from falling down into the bottom end by tucking some paper towel in there. Then if you're worried about dirt and debris that has fallen on top of the paper towel, use a vacuum for when you take them out. Keeping the inside of the engine clean is super important. So at this point, we've got everything cleaned up, the old pistons are exposed, the old rings are off, and we're ready for reassembly. But I do have to say, for a sled with over 18,000 kilometers on it, I'm pretty impressed with the conditions of the pistons and cylinders, so I am comfortable just installing the new rings. Besides, I wanted to show that this job could be done on a little bit more of a budget, so we're not putting new pistons in. However, if I cared a little bit more, I probably would opt for new pistons in this case. But that would add about $100 per cylinder, almost doubling the cost for this job. Another cost I'm avoiding is rebuilding the cylinders with a new Nicosil coating or buying replacements altogether. Now Nicosil is the hard coating on the inside wall of the cylinders. It's very thin and super hard for a long wearing surface. Now the inside of these cylinders don't have any deep scratches, which is good, but they're polished pretty good from the wear. Almost all of the crosshatch pattern is worn off. And because the hatch is worn off, the next thing I'm going to do is super controversial. Online, I cannot find the answer as to whether or not you can or can't or even should hone a Nicosil cylinder, but I'm going to do it anyways. The crosshatch is the crisscross scratch pattern in the cylinders that helps hold lubricating oil for the rings, but it's also there to help seat in the new rings which we're installing. So if there isn't any hatch left because it's been worn off, the new rings will most likely glaze and not seat properly, giving up any gains you might have had by installing the new rings in the first place. That's why I'm taking the chance with a very light hone job. To do this job absolutely properly, the jug should be brought to an engine machine shop where they have very expensive automated equipment to cut the new crosshatch. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just using this cheap three finger hone to clean things up. It's not just good, it's good enough. Now you can also use Scotch-Brite pads and soap and water to clean up the cylinders or to remove a little bit of aluminum transfer. If you got a lot of aluminum transfer from squeaking a piston, well, you might want to go at things with muriatic acid, but be real careful with that stuff. It is nasty, 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 and will eat through your skin if given half the chance. Now when it comes to honing, never ever use a ball hone on a two-cycle cylinder. The balls will get caught in the transfer ports and do damage. Ball hones are for four-cycle cylinders only. With the cylinders all cleaned up, it's time to install the new rings on the old pistons. You do want to make sure that the new rings fit well in the ring lands and move around freely. The cylinders are next. Just make sure to lube everything up with some two-cycle oil and make sure that the ring end gaps line up with the anti-rotation pins in the ring groove as you carefully slide the jugs back on. So over the last few minutes, I didn't go through each and every detail it's going to take to change the piston rings in your sled. That would take way more time than I've got. Instead, I wanted to hit some of the high points, plus give you some tips that might give you the confidence to tackle a job like this yourself because it's really not that hard. Plus, it can be a lot of fun when you've got somebody in the shop helping you like I've had Brody here today. And we're not quite done with the old SRX here. We're still waiting on parts for those exhaust valves for that new cable, but we're getting really close. So Brode, what do you think? Uh, is this sled going to have 100 miles an hour in it now? Well, as long as it's faster than the SCSI, then I don't care. Faster than the SCSI. It probably will be faster than the SCSI because that sled never fails to fail. 